Okay, guys. Whoa! We got the big throttle body installed. The question is, is it worth any power? Okay, guys, now we got the Ford blower on our LS up on the dyno. It's time to test some throttle bodies. That's right, we've got the 78 millimeter, the 102, and the giant Acufab oval. What do you say? Let's get going. Okay, what's this all about? Well, here's the story. Tom Demuse from Demuse Engineering has come up with an intake manifold and adapter plate. That allows us to install either the M122 supercharger from the 5.4 liter GT500, or the even bigger 2.3 liter Trinity blower from the 5.8 liter GT500. That's right, you can install those blowers that guys are getting rid of, used because they've already upgraded them for Whipples and Kenny Bells and 2650s. By the way, Tom also has a kit to do a 2650 and might also have stuff for Hemis, but that's another video for another day. Right now, we're gonna concentrate on taking his kit, installing a 2300, this one is actually a five liter Coyote from Ford Racing, but it also fits. We're gonna put this blower on my Junkyard 5.3 with a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam to find out if the Truck Norris cam actually is also a blower cam, and guess what? I think that it is. We're gonna go ahead and put the blower on, run it, find out how much boost it makes and how it's going to do it. Then I'm gonna run a whole string of tests. Starting with this, and this, and this. Okay guys, whoa, we got the big throttle body installed. The question is, is it worth any power? Okay guys, who's ready for a data overload here on our testing with the Ford blower on the LS application? You remember from the other video that I posted where we just installed the blower and put it up on the dyno, we ran the motor naturally aspirated and this is that combination. It's an L33 with the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam. It had inch and seven eighths long tube headers, the Holly HP management system. We had 80 pound injectors and we ran this thing with 30 degrees of total timing on pump gas. This thing made 427.7 horsepower and 415.8 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed the supercharger. This is a 2.3 liter blower. This one was from Ford Racing, but it's the same supercharger that you would run on a 2000 uh, or, or, or on a 5.8 liter GT500. So it's a 2.3 liter displacement, capable of supporting quite a bit of power. But here's what happened when we installed the supercharger. And this is with the stock throttle body, a stock GM485360 throttle body, the uh, drive-by cable throttle body, not the drive-by wire unit, 78 millimeters. And this thing produced 657 horsepower. Peak torque was near 670 foot-pounds. And it's important to note that when we installed this throttle body, we had to use a number of adapters to adapt this thing down. The elbow coming off of the supercharger actually had an oval opening, which we'll run an oval throttle body on. But we basically adapted the oval to a 102 and then the 102 down to the, down to the 78. So equipped with a 78 millimeter throttle body, the boost on the load in down here around 4,000 RPM 
was 14.7 pounds. It was right at 200 kPa. But during the run, it would drop down to 188 kPa. So I basically had a falling boost curve with this throttle body. So the boost dropped from 14.7 pounds down to 12.9 pounds. We're also gonna take a look at the charge temperatures and that's that's gonna be some good stuff because this thing was equipped with an air to water intercooler and we were running dyno water through it. So we can look at the air intake temps and see how it's climbing or dropping, see what it's doing. But run with this stock throttle body, we produced 656 horsepower or so. Here's what happened after we installed the larger 102 millimeter throttle body and replacing the adapter section to mount the smaller throttle body. Here is the 102. And you can see we picked up a lot of power. Peak power was now over 700 horsepower, 702 horsepower. Peak torque was getting near 685 foot pounds. And the reason for this is on a any positive displacement supercharger, it does not want to have an inlet restriction. When you have an inlet restriction, what you'll see, like we saw with the smaller throttle body, is that you're actually going to get a drop in boost. It'll either level boost out or it will make it drop as you go up in engine speed. The bigger throttle body allowed the boost not to fall off nearly as much. It started off at the same 200, 201 kPa on the load in and dropped only slightly to 197 kPa, which is about 14.2 pounds. So it went from 14.7 to 14.2, but allowed this combination now to exceed over 700 horsepower. So our final look is what we did when we replaced the 102 millimeter throttle body with the large oval throttle body from AccuFab. This is the throttle body that actually bolted right on. It was, it's a Ford unit designed for the Super Cobra Jet applications. Here's what happened when we installed the oval throttle body. So we picked up, you know, maybe just a little bit, 705 or 706 horsepower. Peak torque was maybe up just a little bit, but not very much. And what this shows us is that our first jump going from the 78 millimeter to the 102 basically brought all the airflow that we needed at this power level. Going up even larger to the oval throttle body didn't show any significant gain. So a couple of things could be happening here. One, the oval throttle body might not flow any more than 102. And also, you need to look at what the throttle body is flowing into. It might be that the elbow attached to the supercharger or the inlet of the supercharger, irrespective of that elbow, that might also be the limiting factor. Now we're gonna be able to turn this thing up and obviously make more power. We can put different camshafts in it, cylinder heads, all kinds of stuff to make, or and obviously we can also turn the boost up. But here's what happened when we ran our throttle body test and it shows the importance of having a big enough throttle body, but it should be pointed out, <laughs> the larger throttle body is also difficult to get a smooth drivability because the opening rate on the throttle body, all of a sudden you got a little bit, you got a little bit, and then you go, whoa, now, oh, now I got all of it. So. Take care in putting a big throttle body, especially on a positive displacement supercharger. Now let's take a look at the inlet air temperature made during the runs with the different throttle bodies, the stock throttle body, the 102, and the big oval throttle body. And we found something interesting, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think caused this. So this was the inlet air temperature made during the run with a 102 millimeter throttle body. The boost, as I said, went from about 14.7 pounds down to 14.2 pounds. The inlet air temperature rose as it normally does. We've got an air to water intercooler. We have dyno water running through that air to water intercooler. The water running through the intercooler is 98 degrees. The inlet or the air temperature inside the dyno cell was right at about 80 degrees on that day. So what happened is, we started our run on the load in. The inlet air temperature under the blower at 14.7 pounds of boost started out at 96.8 degrees and rose steadily up to 6,500 where we reached a peak of 113 degrees and that's with the 102 millimeter throttle body. Here's what happened when we made a run with the oval throttle body. Very, very similar. It started out a couple of degrees hotter, 100 degrees. Actually ended up slightly lower at 111 degrees. The difference that you're seeing there, you know, a couple of degrees is a variation between run to run. But here's the interesting part. When we ran the stock throttle body, the smallest of the three, we actually got the highest temperature. I mean, it started out with well within the range of the other two. It started out at 98.9, so between the 102 and the oval. 
but rose steadily and actually showed a higher finishing charge temperature despite the fact that it had a lower boost level it uh, was up to 116 degrees which is not a big change but you can see that it's higher than the others all the way through and remember it dropped in boost from 14.7 pounds down to 12.9 so it has a slightly higher charge temperature at a lower boost level which <laughs> goes against like you know common sense so what do you guys think what do you think would cause that what do you is is the smaller throttle body we know that it's a restriction is the blower having to work harder let me know in the comments what you think why that there's this change in temperature was that we know that this was not an, an anomaly because it did this run after run so it was higher it seemed like with the smaller throttle body let me know what you guys think in the comments and let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure putting stepping up in throttle body size basically on our Ford blower on our LS application? But as we have shown many, many times in the past, I've done this test many, many times, and putting a bigger throttle body, especially on a positive displacement supercharger, always a good idea in terms of power output. The more air that you can get into the supercharger, the more power it will put out. As we saw stepping up from the 78 millimeter to the 102, we picked up a big power gain. 50 horsepower or so but you'll notice that when we went to the oval throttle body we really didn't show much of a gain now this could be because of a couple things and we covered this maybe it doesn't flow as uh, any more than the 102 maybe the inlet is the restriction maybe that the motor really just doesn't need any more airflow going into it at that power level and that's a very important point you'll get to a point where if we put two throttle bodies or three or four on there it's just not going to do anything because it has enough airflow going in for the power output that it has going out but here's something that's also very important when it comes to big throttle bodies on positive displacement applications it can become tricky for drivability you see when you open that throttle body a little bit a lot of air goes in because the throttle body is bigger so what happens is the thing is going to want to go whoa <laughs> and you're going to want to take off so Tuning is going to become critical on big throttle bodies. Now, drive-by wire helps you get around that because you can manage that. But when it comes to a manual throttle body, basically, you're in control. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to take a look at pump gas versus E85. Also, I got a cool uh, bypass valve trick. We got some charge temperatures, even more data. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.